Hello, this is a video about advanced electric wiring for LEDs and resistors. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of you who have been working with these LEDs and resistors and wires and trying to figure out how to get them together. Um, this is a hard thing to do and your work helped me figure out what I think a uh, good solid way to do this is. So, I want to show you what that good solid way is. You want to use a pair of uh, needle nose pliers or even the tip of the wire stripper will also work. And you're going to start by basically making two loops. I've got the positive side of this LED turned outward and I'm going to keep turning it so it's kind of a loop like this. Um, and then I'm going to strip this red wire. Um, Notice I'm going to twist, to give this a little twist before I actually pull it off. That usually helps it pull off a little bit more effectively. Um, and I'm going to twist this wire in the same way that I twisted the LED. Notice I'm using the needle and splash to kind of like push this twist so it makes a little U. That allows me to then kind of connect these to each other like that. So you notice they are connected to each other and at this point I'm going to use those pliers to squeeze these together. So I'm going to squeeze this pretty tight. Notice um, if I can get close enough on this. I've squeezed that pretty tight against the LED. I'm going to do the same thing for this over here. While you're doing this it is really really important to be careful of this joint right here, the joint between the LED a uh, wire that sticks out and the and the plastic that um, makes it sort of like makes the the LED part that lights up uh, safe. This is very brittle. If you bend it back and forth, like like if you bend this part back and forth, it will break off. But notice, I've already got a pretty strong, um, pretty good electrical connection here. Um, depending on how tightly I was able to push this, that might be a good enough connection. But two things I'm worried about are making a short circuit across this LED from here to here and as this gets a little bit of use making sure that it actually continues to be an effective connection so notice like if I bend this it may not actually make the connection as well later on as I want it to so I'm going to take a little piece of foil really 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 pretty tiny like maybe a centimeter square and I'm going to wrap it around this joint like so. It doesn't have to be super neat, I can just kind of crumple it on there, but the idea is even if this thing flexes around back and forth, I still have a connection through the foil. The last step here to make this really secure and strong and also to keep it electrically insulated from this other wire to prevent it from shorting out is to take a really teeny piece of masking tape or blue painters tape. Scotch tape will not work for this, and I think actually the blue tape or the masking tape is even better than electrical tape. Um, and watch how I do this. I'm going to lay it against this flat part and then I'm going to try to just kind of roll it around. I would like this to be as flat against the wire as I can get it. So I'm gonna, just going to keep rolling it. And if it's a little crim cr crinkly, that's fine. Um, but this is basically what I'm looking for. Um, I have something that's strong, that's not going to pull out. It's a little bit flexible. I can still bend it if I need to bend it. And that aluminum foil on the inside is keeping that connection pretty strong. And also, it's, a, a, it's, it's insulated from other connections. Notice I can also do this with a resistor. If I was going to... Uh, if I needed to attach my resistor to another side of an LED or if I need to even just connect this directly to another LED, I could do that same thing by making another loop in this and making another loop on this side of the resistor, um, like so. And that would just allow me to make that connection from the resistor to the LED. I'm not going to show you that because I just showed you that here, but I do want to show you one other thing which has to do with how you want to mount these in the walls or the ceilings of your house. Notice I've got a piece of scrap foam core here. Um, and if I just use a, use a sharp pencil to poke through this and then kind of twist the pencil 
back and forth like that. I give myself a hole that I can put this wire through. If I do that again, right next to it, really, really close, in fact, and give myself another hole like that, I've got two holes for the two wires that are sticking out of this thing. And if I thread these through like this, um, I can get something that looks pretty classy. That's just sort of mounted there on the wall or the ceiling of my, of my uh, house. And I can then bend these outward to make it pretty secure. Um, my, uh, I would assume that I would have like another wire sticking off here so that this would have something to connect to. But my last step would be, if I did have that wire, is to take another piece of blue tape and just lay it across the top of this so that it's nice and sturdy. Now, if I do this, if I make that connection, um, then this has a chance of being really strong. And I'll just go ahead and walk this over to the power supply so we can show you how it works. So you can see I've got this connected so that it's kind of peeking through the ceiling of this foam core. Uh, I've got it hooked up to the power supply to three volts, and this is a nice and sturdy connection on the back of here. Um, I wanna show you one last thing over here, which some people figured out, which is really clever. Hard to do well, but clever. If you want to, it's possible to create basically um, what we'd call a high pressure rail and a low pressure rail or maybe this is like six volts and this is zero volts that is like you've got a bunch of connections on to a high pressure section and a low pressure section the advantage of this is we can just connect bulbs across here and it makes it super convenient because each one of these bulbs is connected in parallel getting high to low pressure or six volts to zero volts pressure across it. Like we could do the same thing with LEDs if we wanted to. Um, one way that people have been figured out to do this, which is a little tricky, is involves kind of making a break in the middle of the wire. So if you imagine this wire is kind of your high pressure rail, your six volt rail. I've used the wire stripper here and I've gone to the middle of the wire and I make that connection and then I pull this out. Notice I'm not stripping the whole thing. I'm just pulling it out just a little bit. And what this allows me to do, I'm going to use this resistor as an example, is to hook on to here and clamp it with those needle nose pliers again as tight as I can to this connection. Let me see if I can do it. Um, so I'm going to tighten this onto that wire like that. Now, this I wouldn't say is all that strong or sturdy a connection, but you can use that same trick of taking a little bit of foil, wrapping it around like so, and then reinforcing it with some tape. So I'm gonna take that blue tape just like I did before and go like this. Um, make myself a little, I'm gonna rip this actually so I can go around and around. Um, this is now a strong and sturdy connection and I could make another connection here and I could split it and make another connection here. That would be a kind of handy way to make this strong connection for my house um, without having to go through and add more and more and more wires. Um, so these are two techniques that you can use if you're trying to attach LEDs um, and resistors to each other and to wires. Um, again, thanks to everybody who helped figure this stuff out. This is not easy. Um, and good luck playing around with this and making your house perfect.